All right, want to see something cool? <laughs> so I ordered a couple of gears and that chain, and of course I had to do a lot of modifications, and I made this bushing and added a bearing and all that stuff. So all this. Hello, hello. Hey, this video is about the modification I did to my Hammer A341 to raise and lower the bed with a standard drill. Now, this modification could be applied to different machines or different brands of machines. Check it out. So I start by removing the handle. If you check out the first part of the video, you'll see how that handle just has a bolt going right through this hole in the shaft. And then that rub collar will be using that to attach the sprocket. So the sprocket, I needed to drill a hole the same size as the shaft. So I used a mic to check that and got lucky and had a drill bit that exact size. <laughs> Don't laugh. I didn't want to damage the teeth on the sprocket. So I just screwed the sprocket down to a 4x2. Here you can see that rub collar it has a set screw and I slipped the sprocket in place just to make sure everything was going to fit. Then I realized it would be easier if I flipped everything around at least to weld it and uh, tacked it in place. And I know these welds aren't pretty, there's not a lot of penetration, but for what it is, it's plenty strong. So this part's done, I can put the set screw back and the rub collar back in place. So with the first sprocket done, I head over to my Atlas metal lathe and start cutting down a piece of metal. Here I'm just cutting a hole in the end, drilling a hole in the end, right? A little bit of oil. And I can progressively make larger and larger holes. I love this thing, it's super handy. And the funny thing is that I only paid a hundred bucks for it. <laughs> yeah, I brought it home, it's pretty, it's pretty dirty, but cleaned it up and yeah, love this thing, use it all the time. And if this thing doesn't work, I'll go over to my dad's shop. He has a large South Bend lathe, which I absolutely love. And here I'm turning down this metal chunk where I can fit this other sprocket. And of course I want a super tight fit. I'll press that in place and then weld it. So once I was happy with the outside, then I could start focusing on the inside diameter. All right, yeah. so I decided to add a bearing. And somebody told me that all, all bearings are metric, which makes sense. This, I thought it was 7 eighths, but it's more like 22 millimeters. And so I'm sneaking on this fit. And right now, um, if I mic this in inches, it's about 865. And right now I'm about 863. So I have to be careful. Uh, so it's so easy to go past. And that is just wanting to go in. So, yeah. And don't give me any crap. I, uh, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> but it sure is fun. All right, there it is. Beautiful, beautiful fit. Let me pull this guy out of there. So from that ugly thing to that. And this isn't, uh, you know, machinist quality. This is uh, done on a lathe by a woodworker. <laughs> but guess what? It's gonna work. Yeah, man. Okay, looky. So here's that piece I made, and I actually turned a, a shoulder on it so the bearing went in and bottomed out. And then I'll press this, I'll press this gear on. Yeah, he means sprocket. It just, it just fits. It'll, that'll be a really nice tight fit. Uh, once that goes on and then um, this will get a washer from this side that washer goes against the machine this cap screw goes through there and I'll weld something like this on there and since I can reach all the way through there with an Allen I'll be able to tighten up that cap screw right and then the chain will go on the gear and I'll be able to use a drill with a 3 8 uh, drive to turn this gear sprocket <laughs> kind of cool right it's gonna be awesome now those sprockets are hardened so I couldn't really manipulate those easily so of course that's why I made this combo bushing bearing that would press inside and I don't really remember where I got the chain and sprocket but 
it's pretty available online. You can find it easily. Chain, chains and sprockets. Here you can see it pressed into place. Then of course, tack welded. And the chain I just ordered in length. And of course it had a master link. Once the two sprockets were complete, I calculated a length that would fit on the machine and made an assembly, anchored it to a four x two and tested it out. Since that bed casting is angled, called a draft angle, I used a straight edge and some magnets and a block of wood to make sure, to ensure that my drill bit was straight as I made that hole. All right, check it out thusly. So this will get a nut on the back of it, this machine thread, machine bolt, right? And the, these castings are back beveled. This one's back beveled about three and three quarter degrees. I was told by Jack Forsberg that's so they can get them out of the sand when they cast those. Makes perfect sense. So I needed a shimmed washer. So I just put a couple of tack welds on a washer to shim it at that angle, put a little notch at the top so I can designate that as the top to get that angle right. Right? <laughs> Just keep the chain on here. That's gonna go like, like that. <laughs> then I just need something to attach here to turn the whole mechanism. Works ultra smooth. Yeah. <clears throat> and then this dude. We'll weld on here and through this socket hole, I still have access to this Phillips to remove that if ever needed. And then that I can drive that with a with an impact. So, <laughs> and you can turn it decently fast. Of course, I'm not gonna go full bore. You don't wanna go full throttle, but you know, you can crank this that fast, so. I'll be able to turn it pretty quick with a with an impact or a or a drill. Maybe a drill on low would be best. So yeah. Woohoo! That's gonna be cool. So here I have that socket and sprocket ready to weld in place. Okay. <laughs> there it is. It's not very pretty. Ugly little beast. But it's gonna work great. So this was just a, a metric bolt I had, and I used metric because that's what fit this bearing, the ID of this, uh, the inside di dimension of that, inside diameter of that bearing the best, so metric. So this guy will go in here. I gotta make sure that that little washer is ramped the way I need it. Right in there, like that. Washer, lock washer, I like lock washers. Nut. Tighten that baby up. All right, let's check it out. Three eighths drive. that great and then of course <clears throat> the handle will go back on including my odometer type readout I'll have to recalibrate that and so you don't want to spin this too fast but and in hindsight I don't think it hurts anything I don't know. spinning it fast so I don't have to go through the anguish of using the hand crank <laughs> yeah and it's a funny thing, I actually look forward, it's kind of fun to raise and lower the bed now. Mm -hmm. Who knew? And I need about six inches clearance in order to flip that dust shield. And here you can see a little mark that I put, which I thought should be there from the factory. So this is my joiner planer combo machine. And a lot of people complain about combo machines because 
the change over time, you have to drop the table down to use the joiner mode. But to me, it's really a fantastic trade-off. It takes less than a minute to go from planer to joiner or from, jo from joiner to planer, switching the hose and dropping the table down, all that jazz. No big deal, but I thought I'd do this just for fun. Check it out. <laughs> so I ordered a couple of gears and that chain and of course I had to do a lot of modifications and I made this bushing and added a bearing and all that stuff. So all this will be on my IGTV. Uh, so check it out. Yeah. I believe I mentioned earlier that this mechanism could be adapted to a, l a number of different machines, right? Simple concept. I had made something similar years ago for an old sander that took forever to raise up and down. And this one, I believe I started in the end of 2018 and been using it ever since. So I, th I thought I'd share this with you. This was my first attempt at making this chain, you know, this drive with a screw gun, uh, a little bit easier, just some plywood. I made this last summer. I was really never happy with it because, well, I just like gears, chains, and sprockets. But it's, uh, it's kind of crude, but pretty effective. I didn't quite like it because a, it was kind of a pain in the ass to get on and off. I guess I could make that bigger. But two, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't see my dial. So that's uh, why I came up with this. Now, Jack Forsberg, he made something that's really awesome for his over-under. And he made his years ago. Check that out. That's uh, Jack, Jack English Machine. Yeah, super smart dude with impeccable craftsmanship. I'll leave a link to his IG in the description, yeah. So this is what I finally came up with to just leave here at the planer joiner. I just went to Hobby Lobby, or <laughs> no, not Hobby Lobby, Play School. <laughs> Harbor Freight, H, that's where the H came from, Harbor Freight, and picked up one of these inexpensive drills, like 50 bucks, and I can just leave it here. I've chucked up one of these dudes, and I keep this on uh, low speed, but with that, I can move that up and down. And I get people asking about this being a knuckle buster. I've never hit my knuckles, not even once. It's plenty far enough away. Some of the camera angles might have been, look like it would hit, but plenty, plenty out of the way. Yeah, man. I absolutely hope you got something out of this video and you can adapt something to your machine. Thanks a ton.